Kind of like a diagonal back. I'm just following her na the natural curve of her head. Okay. So, zigzag parting down one side. Take it somewhere else. No, you can take the chair. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Someone that wants more of a drastic change, 
that's where you would go more with our blonde, uh, blonde or, or blonde or plex, right? And you're gonna put that in foils and all of that to really get that lift. We're doing surface painting today. It still has up to seven levels of lift, depending on saturation, how you mix it, but you cannot expect to just be, you know, all of a sudden making people blonde with a clay-based lightener. That's not what it's meant for, right? It's meant to be able to paint. Um, it's not gonna smudge and spread to other areas. It's gonna kind of harden and dry on the outside, but it's still working on the inside, right? So again, I'm using Blonde or Free Light. I like to mix mine one to one and a half. One part powder, one and a half parts developer. With our lighteners, the power is in the powder, right? So the more developer you add, the more you're diluting the, 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 process. the process, right? Um, but it also kind of depends on the consistency that you like to work with. Some people like it a little bit runnier, some people like it a little bit thicker. That's up to you. The only thing I ask is that you please use a scale. There's no eyeballing, there's no, oh, this is to the right consistency. You don't know. In order to get even results, you need to make sure that you're measuring. So I'm going to be using our Free Light developer in 30 volume, and I will be doing 45 grams. I know some of you probably do ounces. I can't help you. <laughs> Whatever that equates to, maybe two ounces. I don't know. I don't but as long as it's a one to one and a half ratio. There we go. So 45 grams of developer, and then I'm going to do 30 grams of powder. That's an ounce. 30 grams. Sorry, 30 grams is an ounce? Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I also like to put my developer in first. Because you know, once it starts to mix, that's when it starts working, right? So by doing this on top, if I need a couple extra minutes to set up or something, I know that I'm gonna be okay. Who would have thought there's so much math and science when it comes to hair, right? lightener that you make sure to get in all those corners so you don't have little pockets of powder in there later and then also making sure you're not whisking it like a beaten eggs right this is a chemical process going on so be gentle with it more folding until it's fully mixed do you need me to rinse it Then I'm going to make this nice and taut. 
extension. I'm going to go in with my lightener. And I'm going to start on the mid shaft first, right? I'm not trying, this is my blending area, so I'm not trying to plop a bunch of product there. I'm going to work this down and then using the other side of my brush, start to fade that into here. Very soft touch, right? That's my blending area. I don't want any harsh lines there. But I do want lights of brightness here on the ends. So that's when I'm gonna load my brush up some more and then fully saturate these ends. this is very versatile right so if you don't want it to be like super solid all over you can leave some hair in between you can do a weave and leave some natural hair in between if you want it to be a little bit softer but we really want to see this so I'm going to take this next section same thing I'm going to go in a nice gentle back comb I'm not teasing it to death right we got to get this out there and her hair is naturally curly too Right, so I'm not needing to like go crazy. Just one very soft push to create some diffusion there. And loading my brush up. Adding the most product here in the mid shaft. This one I am gonna work up a little bit higher. Now the key to getting really good lift out of this is your saturation too. So making sure that you are using enough product on the hair. Also making sure that you're not getting your um, blending into the back combing either, because that's how you can end up with a bunch of spotting, okay? So I'm just using the tip of my brush just to gently blend out that line. And then, again, I'm going to go in and fully saturate. You see I'm pushing my brush back and forth? These are bigger sections, right? I want to make sure that I'm getting full saturation all the way through. And because this is an open air lightener, I can just lay that right there. Okay. So far so good? Nice and easy, right? <laughs> See how quick that is? I'm like, we're almost done with the front already. Right. Move around to the other side. So I'm just working back and forth, side to side, because again, I want the lift to be balanced as well. I don't want to go do this whole side and then come back and do this whole size. I'm gonna work here, 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 here. Make sense? And if you are, since there's some students here, if you are a little bit slower, you can balance that with uh, your developer, right? So you maybe wanna start with like a six volume or a 10 volume, and then as you remix, work your way up to a 20 or 30. If you know that it's gonna take you a little bit more time. So again, Nice soft push. Again, I'm just leaving all those little baby hairs out, you know. It's again gonna help with the blend as well too, so you're not getting those harsh lines. I think that's the hardest part about learning balayage is the blend and how to not get those lines. That's why I love the back combing technique so much. And I am kind of making this a little bit higher in the face and a little bit lower in the back this way. Because again, where you leave depth, is also just as important as where you put the light as well. Because if you have darker pieces, it's gonna make those light pieces feel brighter. And we also wanna keep the dimension. Again, I want this to grow out really well for her. Since this is her first hair coloring experience. We have all these people watching you too. <laughs> okay. 
Again, I'm just placing this foil here just to keep it out of her face. You don't have to use foils with free lights, but you can. You can use foils, you can use plastic wrap, you can use other kinds of separators, whatever works for you. Again, I want more brightness around the face. And lots of lifts, so lots of product. So I'm making sure to, that's why I like this too, because I can visually see where I was at before, because it's not in a foil, right? So I can match that up. Since she does wear a center part, you gotta keep that in mind too. It needs to be balanced on both sides. Lots of product, and then blend. You can also use your finger a bit to like blend this out. Now you could use a paddle too if you like. I just feel like I get more good saturation when I'm using my hands to really work it in. All right, so now instead we're gonna jump back to the other side and we're just gonna do the same thing. Super simple. Now I'm purposely taking this as one section because I do wanna leave a little bit of depth through here too. Like I said, I want the pop to really come from underneath. Um, and that is the beauty of balayage. You can take bigger sections than you can when you're foiling, right? When you're foiling, although, don't get me wrong, I love me some foiling. That's always going to be my favorite. But, you know, you can only take little eighth of an inch sections, right? Here you can take much bigger sections and work it out. I also recommend you kind of change up the pattern that you're doing. So in the front, I did more, it's high points, low points here. In the back, I'm creating a little bit more of a V. So again, the more you switch up the direction that you're doing, the more blending you're gonna get as well. So if you still do the same thing on every section, you're still gonna get a line, right? So switch it up every now and then on how you're, on where you're leaving the depth at. Does that make sense? Yeah. So again, this is something that you can do where maybe you've already put her roots, her roots on the back, right? And you can even, you're back combing it, so you can even do her roots in the front and then do this while she's processing. And now you just upped your ticket by another, I don't know how much you charge, but I would charge an extra like 150 for this, right? On top of your, your touch up book. So it's a great way to add to your ticket and give your client something, you know, really special when they get bored. The number one reason why people leave their stylist is because they get bored, right? We love on those people that have been with us for, I'm on their brand new clients, you know, we go all out, but then you have those people that are still there every three, four weeks. Those are the ones you really gotta take care of. Those are the ones that pay the bills, <laughs> right? Root touch-ups, <laughs> like all of this is fun, <laughs> root touch-ups are gonna pay your bills, right? So, you know, giving them options when they, you know, wanna switch things up or, you know, even say, hey, I took this class with Wella, um, I learned this great technique, are you open to try something different? And again, it's low maintenance, it's easy, you don't have to make them blonde, you can do this with caramel and brown tones, right? But just to give them something different.
Any questions so far? How many levels are the light nerves? Um, so the free lights can lift up to seven levels, but like I was saying in the beginning, be reasonable as well too, right? It's a clay lightener, so it's not meant to like take you from a two to a ten. But again, that's where your saturation comes in too, mm -hmm. and depends on what they have on their hair and all those things. But you can get up to seven levels of lift with free lights. I'm expecting to get some pretty good lift out of her, even though she's dark, because she's virgin hair. Right? We shall see. <laughs> what I'm also a believer is the hair is going to do what the hair is going to do. I'm not going to force it. I set very realistic expectations in my consultations. Like, hey, this picture is cute. Um, <laughs> this is great inspiration. <laughs> you know, we may get there one day. Um, I tend to set them up for like, hey, like, Worst case scenario, like you're going to be kind of coppery today. You know, if you have someone that's wanting to do a transition to super blonde, um, but you know, stick with me, stick to my plan, use my product to eventually get you there. I'm not going to sit there and bleach someone's hair to death just because they gave me a picture of bright blonde. And that's what they want. That's not that's not the type of hairdresser I am. Because I mean, if you don't have any hair left to do, then <laughs> you know. So you want to take care of the hair. One of the number one reasons why people don't color their hair is because they're afraid of damage. So making sure that you're coming from that expert position and using great products like Longerplex and Wellaplex and things like that to really um, protect the hair and setting realistic expectations, right? I'm expecting for her seven or eight, realistically, right? We're almost done, you see how fast this is? <laughs> and that's with me talking and stuff too. So this is a really, really great express service. And again, if you wanted to, you know, make this into a full balayage, you can still keep these same techniques, right? Going with zigzag parts and back combing. You can still get a full balayage with these techniques as well. So I have a question. Yes. How do you manage uh, client expectations? You know, when the client comes in, you know, they've seen Instagram, somebody got mm -hmm. a balayage, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden they're platinum blonde, mm -hmm. and they're starting out at a level one. Mm -hmm. How do you tell them if, that they're not going to If I have to spend 30 minutes on a consultation, I will spend 30 minutes on a consultation. I even do mini theory classes with my clients. I will break out my natural color, color indicator to show them you are here. <laughs> This is where you want to go. We have to go through all of these colors before we get there, right? And I think once they see that, that visual of, oh, because they think we have this magic blonde wand, and it's like, oh, there you go. Blonde for you, and blonde for you, and blonde for you. Like, it doesn't work that way, right? So if I have to go into educator mode and explain to them why, and then I also, I have proof, I have clients. I have curly clients that are platinum blonde. It took a year but they're platinum blonde and their curls are healthy and it's beautiful, right? And so, and I also break it down realistically price-wise and not just the cost of the service. If you want me to take you platinum, here's a list of products that I'm gonna need you to use. Here's instructions on how much to use and how often to use it. You're gonna have to pre-book for treatments every four to six weeks in between, right? So if I put together a whole system for them, a whole plan for them as opposed to, oh, I want to come in and I want to get this. And honestly, I'm at the point in my career, if they want to fight me on it, I'm just not the stylist for you. Somebody will absolutely down the street, make you blonde in a couple hours for a hundred bucks. It's possible, but I'm not going to do that to you and explain to them the whys, you know? So I think it's important as a stylist, like you are the expert. People don't go to their doctor and say, hey, I need this prescription. I need you to do this procedure on me. Yeah. Right? You're a hair doctor. So you need to prescribe them what's best for them and setting realistic expectations. Because a lot of Instagram lies too. That was a foil lies. That was her third session. She wore the same shirt. Like, <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, you know, and again, it is possible. And you see, like, some of those big names that do these big transformations and what it, that is eight hours and four to five thousand dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? They're not also taking six other clients that day. Right. 
Yes. Since I'm asking the difficult question. Yes, please do. I love the it. The theory behind what you're saying is great. Can you do a mock consultation, how you would do it, and how you would explain it to the client? Absolutely. We'll do that while she's processing. That's Perfect. a great idea. Do you have a Wallace Watch book with the natural level indicator? I am also a big believer in strand tests. Because you know what? Clients lie. <laughs> Clients lie. I literally ran into this. I was prepping models for an audition. And this woman said she has never colored her hair before. And I'm like, oh my god, I get a little virgin hair. I put that lightener on her and it was like red from here down <laughs> and bright yellow right here. And I said, well, lightener says that's a lie. Um, she's like, I don't know what happened. Like, I, You don't know how you put black dye on your hair? <laughs> like, and I could even see it once I look closer, like where her gray was, it just stopped. And I'm like, I did a rinse like three years ago. <laughs> Especially if they have long hair. They're like, because just because they can't see it anymore doesn't mean it's still there, right? Mm -hmm. Even like temporary, those sprays and stuff can still like get really caught up in the hair. So it's really important to do a strand test on your clients um, when you're going through like a major color process because you buy it all. <laughs> Already done. That was what, even with me talking, like what, 20 minutes? Right? If I'm really focused, I can get this done like 15 minutes on an average head of hair. I don't, I don't know if you noticed, but when I was around the hairline, I took much smaller sections, right? That's where I want brightness really at, right? Through here. Look, she's already looking good, right? So I'm going to, you can go ahead and have a seat back right here, Jason, while you're processing. <laughs> Who would like to be my volunteer? <laughs> Come on. It's a bald one in the back. <laughs> you have not even seen the hair on my face. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Come on. Boyfriend's tired of my hairdo and wants something different. Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit bored with it too. Um, I saw this beautiful platinum blonde. Here, let me show okay. you on Instagram. Yeah. Let's take a look. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, she had hair just like mine when she started. Uh -huh. I mean, they were able to do that very quickly. <laughs> All right. yeah, this person was? Yeah. I oh, you were there? I saw the whole oh, okay. video. I saw the TikTok of it too. Got it. So Jeremiah, I want you to show me exactly what part of that picture you like. Because I see about three different colors. So tell me exactly which colors that you like. I just see blonde. You see blonde. Very blonde. <laughs> very, blonde. Very, very, very blonde. Very, very, very blonde. Blonde to okay. blonde. So you're liking this color down here, right? Yes. Okay. How do you feel about the roots? Do you like to have a more rooted look, or do you want that blonde all over? No, I want it to last a very, very long time because my boyfriend's cheap. <laughs> so what I'd like to do is go platinum today mm -hmm. and be able to see you again in maybe a, a year. year. <laughs> okay. So tell me, Jeremiah, what is your budget? Um, <laughs> Jeremiah, what is your budget? Let me ask my boyfriend. <laughs> How many of you asked your clients for their budget? 
That's a good idea. Right? <laughs> um, you must know how much is it? Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a breakdown. So the picture that you're wanting right now, and your natural is like hers. I would say, you know, you're about a medium brown. Okay, pause. And here, I'm not gonna say she's a level five or six, right? She doesn't understand that. Yeah. Yeah. You're a medium brown wanting to go to platinum blonde, okay? Typically, that is a long process in order to do it safely, okay? My biggest thing is the integrity of your hair. When we're all done, I still want it to be very shiny. I want it to be very soft with very minimal breakage. That is always my goal with all of my clients, okay? okay. So this is going to be a process. Now I'm gonna break it down to you as to why, okay? So this is how hair naturally lightens, okay? Right now, you're about here. Like I said, medium brown. Where you're wanting to be is like over here. <laughs> right? Yeah, there, that, right? That's very yellow. Yeah, right? right? I, I don't so you're wait. wanting to be all the way up here. So we have to take you from here all the way over to here. Great. Can we do it in an hour? Because I can go lunch date with a friend. <laughs> no, it's not. Again, this is a process. This is not something done well that can just happen like this. It's not a microwave type of color service. Okay, okay. This is, I need an extra hour, so two hours? <laughs> this is more of a couture color service. It's not a matter of hours, it's a matter of months so, to safely get you to where you wanna go. How light can I go today? So here's the thing. The way that hair lightens is every time you move up a level, it's gonna expose underlying pigments that's already in your hair, right? That's what lightener does, it's removing pigments. So first, your hair is gonna turn red, and then it's gonna turn orange, and then it's gonna go yellow, and then we can finally get to more of like a paler yellow to oh, get to that kind of I don't wanna want. be red. <laughs> and I don't wanna be orange. Can we just go blonde today? The honest answer for you is no. no. Not today, unfortunately. So what are you gonna send me out with? <laughs> well, we're gonna do a process. What I recommend for you and what's in your budget, it seems like, is that we first just do a highlight. We're going to gradually get you lighter and lighter. So today, we're gonna to do a partial highlight. I'm gonna to start to add some dimension into your hair. And you're gonna feel a little bit lighter. You won't be blonde blonde, but you will feel a little bit lighter. And then you're gonna come back in six weeks and we're gonna do it again. And then you're gonna come six weeks after that and then we're gonna do it again. So we're gonna be able to get you to where you want safely in about three appointments. And how much is it gonna cost? Because he's asking me. So Hold he up! <laughs> I'll let you know in a minute. Hold on. Yeah, I'm finding out. <laughs> so this is where I would have a notepad and I'm gonna, just like a receipt, I'm gonna write everything out, right? So partial highlight for me, it's $175. Plus, I, it, I, you have to do a well effects treatment as well because this is gonna keep your hair strong as we go along. That's an additional $50. We are also gonna do a treatment while you're in the shampoo bowl to lock everything in and keep your hair nice and strong. That's gonna be an additional $35. We're also probably gonna have to do a haircut, which is gonna be $125. And then I have a set of products that I need you to take home to do in between your service, so that when you come back for your next appointment, your hair is really healthy so we can go through another lightening process. Is that something that you're willing to commit to? Ooh, I'm gonna call my other boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Both of their credit cards for this. But I, let me show you my work. You can see my clients start to finish. We've done this before and their hair is still beautiful. It's still very healthy, but it does take time because my, again, the most important thing for me is the health of your hair, not just making you blonde. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, I mean, that's a, that's is that something waiting. you're willing to commit to? Yes. Okay, well, I have, this, I have this waiver, because <laughs> I do. <laughs> I'm gonna have you feel that you're willing to commit to this for the next three appointments and use these products so that we can get you the desired results that you like. Can you tell us a little bit about the waiver? So I always have a waiver for like major transformation saying you acknowledge that we've had this consultation, this is our plan for you, this is what could happen, um, and that I'm not liable <laughs> if things happen, right? So, because it is a lightning process, that's a major thing. So yes, breakage could happen. Are you gonna be okay with that? I mean, I've been doing hair 18 years, and you will have clients, I mean, I agree with you, that come in and they want to be blonde and they want it now. Mm -hmm. uh, they want it now and they want it cheap and they want it fast mm -hmm. and 
you can't get it all. Um, but the waiver thing is something that I don't think enough of you guys do. Yeah. How many of you have ever thought about having la waivers? We have thought, but we haven't slot? done it. Mm -hmm. okay. have How many of you have started researching what should be on a waiver? Mm -hmm. Or started thinking about what should be on your waiver? Mm -hmm. Now, Akila, do you put uh, pricing on your waivers? Like estimated or like the, no. the price today? Because it's going to depend on what we do. Like I'll have a blank section where I write in. Do you, my... do, you do a quote for the day? Mm -hmm. Because one of the problems that I have seen in salons is sticker shock at the end. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and I know you've seen it, in, maybe not with yourself, but with another stylist who didn't quite tell their client oh, yeah. how much they were going to be spending. Oh, yeah. And then they go back out well, $500? Like, yeah. <laughs> That's why I do all of that in my consultation. Are you able to commit to this? Now, if not, then maybe we can, you might get some quick face framing layers, or, you know, highlights real quick. So then I'm able to adjust to what they can afford. But the biggest thing for me is I'm not expensive, I'm just not in your budget. Yeah. So my prices are my prices, <laughs> no matter what. I can work with you <laughs> on what you can do if you really wanna come and see me, but my prices are my prices. So one of my questions for all of you is do you guys have any questions about consultation? I mean, her beautiful client is uh, processing right now. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, now would be a good time to ask a little bit about you know, balayage is great. It's a great process to learn. I mean, it's a great technique to add to your toolbox. But consultation is something you're going to do every single day. And Akila has been doing this a long, <laughs> long, long, long time. Mm -hmm. And it would be a good person to ask because more and more we do have people that are doing radical changes. Right. And I know the big group came in after I talked about this in the beginning, but the most important thing is face shape, right? Sitting your client down, taking that mask off, pulling their hair back, and seeing what their face shape looks like. Not enough people do that. Because you can make or break somebody's look. It could be a haircut, it could be a style, it could be color. When you're, especially with balayage, where you put that lightness and depth is really gonna factor into what their face shape looks like, right? Um, so, like we were saying, for example, if somebody has a very, very round face, right, I'm not going to put a ton of brightness right here because lightness expands, darkness recedes. It's the same thing. How many of you do makeup or understand contouring and highlighting with makeup? It's the same thing. If you want to bring these cheekbones in, you're going to have to leave some depth through here. So maybe you're backcombing in these sections to create more of a contour, right? Like I mentioned before, if you have a very long face, you don't want that money piece right on top. You're gonna look like a horse, right? <laughs> Even though they're gonna give you that picture, you can still give them a money piece, but you're gonna wanna leave a little bit of depth at the top and have that coming from underneath, okay? So like I said, if it takes me a half an hour to do a consultation with someone, it takes me a half an hour. We'll figure it out. Yeah. What if you have a client that comes in with, um, they went to somebody else and then they come with you with a very damaged hair? Mm -hmm. That conversation too. It's like as far as lightener, lightener is not on your agenda anymore, <laughs> right? If you come to me with super fried hair, then and you're still wanting more bleach, my answer is no, right? And again, I talk them through like we need to get your hair healthy again. Like we can do some low lighting. Maybe that's a great extensions consultation. You know what I mean? Until they get their hair healthy before you go back in with any lightener, because that's the one thing I'm definitely not going to do. If I see them fried chicken ends, like, no. <laughs> you don't get, you're on like your time out, right? And it's because they're going to people that are just doing what they want them to do and not taking into consideration the health of their hair, right? But I think budget, again, is definitely something that needs to be a part of your consultation. And expectations. You see when he showed me that picture? He was like, I was like, what part of this picture do you like? Because a lot of times, we're as colors, I see five colors, right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden they zoom in, they're like, no, I like this one piece of hair right yeah. here. That's yeah. the color that they wanted. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't make them blonde, and they liked that one caramel strip yeah. that was in there. And now they're like, oh my God, I'm so bright, right? So really break down, and yes, pictures are great, but also realistic expectations. This is not your face. This is not your hair. I don't know what they did to their hair. Like, this is great inspiration. Um, we're gonna go towards this direction, but I'm gonna create something specific for you. Becoming more of that couture colorist. Anybody can go to a grocery store and get a box of medium brown. 
right? So if they're coming in for root touch-ups and you're just putting five stroke zeros on them, are you really being a couture stylist? No. I always have multiple colors in my formulas. Always. Because I want I don't want them to be able to just go to the store and recreate the same thing. My clients do that all the time. They're like, oh my god, I can't get with you, so I went to the store. I'm like, I can tell. Like, <laughs> there's just one inky band of color across your head because I customize your color for you, specific to you. Your skin tone, your eyes, your maintenance level, your job. How often do you want to come in here? Those are all the things that I'm able to charge more for because I'm solely focused on the person that's in my chair. I rarely double book. If I do, it's a client that I know I can be super quick with or blow out or something like that. When I'm doing color, I'm focused on that one client and they know that. So I'm creating something specific to them that they can't go get anywhere else. I moved here a year ago. I still have a client that's a flight attendant that flies here every six weeks from me to I had a client that was in Austin for another event and was like, I'm gonna rent a car, can I come down and see? Like, when you, when you do something special for your clients, those are the loyal ones, right? That's what's gonna give you longevity in your career. You should, there should not be any broke hair stylists in this world if you do this right, right? So setting up your clients, knowing your worth, I see so many amazingly talented stylists. They're like, they're so eager to get people in their chair. I'll do it for $40. No. You're a licensed professional now. No, stop doing that. Because they're then, when you start raising your prices, they're going to have an attitude. I raise my prices every single year. Five to $10, depending on how much things went up. My cost of color is going up. My cost of developer is going up. Cost of gloves have gone up. Um, foils. Foils. Electricity, like everything goes up every year. Why aren't your prices going up every year? Right? So these are all really important things in order to sustain yourself in this business for a long time. Before I moved out here, I owned a salon. I worked three days a week. That's it. That's it. That's all. This is hard on your body. I can't, I'm almost 40. I can't be sitting back here 10, 12 hours a day, five, six days a week. Like my body, I need longevity and I want to be in this career for a very long time. So you get to a point where you're charging enough, I only see three, maybe five clients a day. That's it. Any other questions? So, um, oh, go ahead. What other service do you provide labor for? Sorry? What other service do you provide for labor for? I used to do um, for like relaxers, but I don't do them anymore. Um, so any like serious chemical type of service, you wanna have, and that's to protect yourself. Because things can happen, right? You also get people that are searching for free hair. Don't look at those people like they complain, I want my money back. And I'm like, I just gave you exactly what you asked me for. You know what I mean? So putting all, even if you have to consult with a lawyer, do it. It's worth it to protect yourself, you know? So I literally, I had that happen. I had an Asian client and we took her from level two to silver over a course of six months. And I told her if there is a chance for breakage. There's a chance. And overall, her hair was beautiful. She had a little spot in the, like, right in that nape area. And she's like, oh, my God. Like, oh, I, I, I said damage. She's like, well, you said damage. I didn't know it was going to, like, break. I'm like, that's what hair damage is. Like, we just bleached her hair, like, five times, right? Now, overall, her hair was in great condition. But anytime you're taking somebody from a level 2 to a level 10, you're going to get breakage. That's just a part. I don't care how much plexus and things that you use in the hair. The hair can only do so much at one point, especially in the finer areas, right? And I'm always super careful, but it can happen. So making sure that you have that waiver to protect yourself, right? So if anything does happen, that's okay. Some people have very sensitive scalps. You know, if you're doing on scalp bleaching, definitely do a waiver, because you don't know. You don't know until that bleach is on their head what's gonna happen. Or some people have allergies that you're not aware of. So always make sure that you're protecting yourself with the waiver. Any type of major chemical service, extensions as well, because you can do a set of extensions, you can tell them how to take care of it, and then they come back to you like four months later with dreadlocks and mattiness everywhere, and you're like, girl, I can't help you now, you know what I mean? Like, you need to have that protection there. Anything else? Okay, so for those of you, if you have your phones, you came in a little bit later, I wanted you to download the Wella Education app. So I just briefly wanted to go over the Color Fresh mask that I'm about to use to tone her. So I know the ones that were here early are already downloaded, but if you go to your whatever app store you have and look up Wella Education, it's a red and white app. And then um, for those that did download it, go ahead and pull your phones out for me, please.
it looks like this on the first screen. Yeah. Okay. So if you're in the app, you're going to click on the plus sign. You're going to go to the top middle one. It says Knowledge Library. Is it Women Professional? No, Education. It's like a red, it's a red and white logo. Wait a Knowledge Library. Yeah, Knowledge Library. Yes, that. Professional Education. Yeah. So you're going to go to Knowledge Library, then you're going to go to Main Library. And you are going to go down to Care and Styling. You're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. And it says Color Fresh Mask One Pager. So I need to create a... Um you may need to create an account, yeah. yeah. Can you hold it up to the camera just real quick? I can send it to you. Perfect, just for everyone watching at yeah. home. So these are brand new, they just came out in October. And what they are, are pigmented masks, right? So we're getting some direct dyes in a color mask. So this is great behind the chair. It's also great to send home with your clients for retail. So they come in 11 different shades from natural to bold. So our natural shades are gonna be like our golden gloss, our caramel, our chocolate, but then we also have fun colors like red, pink, mint, and blue. They are fragrance free, which is nice. They also contain avocado oil and apricot kernel oil. They are very moisturizing, very shiny, really great for the hair. So there's a lot of different ways that you can use them. Like after you cover the gray hair, oh, you can um, refresh the color. Um, especially like I love the chocolate on a brunette, which is what we're going to do today. Um, you can use it on pre-lightened hair for toning and for bold colors. But they're just a lot of fun. Um, they were out in Europe for a long time, so we're finally getting them in the US. We're very excited about it. So this is a great way to, um, again, help your clients maintain at home too, especially those redheads. They're that bright red. You know how you know they fade, right? So that's something that they can do to refresh at home or if they're going on vacation. Or even just fun like techniques like this, we can make her pink today. And then it's gonna wash out in a few washes and then we can make her blue. Um, what's cool about these two is that they also fade true to tone. How many of you have done a fashion color and you started out blue and then you ended up gray? Yeah. Right? These are going to fade true to tone. If you start out with the blue, it's just going to get lighter and paler blue. It's not going to switch to a different color. Now one thing is we do not recommend mixing the colors together. Not to say that you can't and that you won't. I know you will. Um, you just can't guarantee the results because there's different dye loads depending on the colors. Like the lilac frost is not going to have as much pigment as the copper glow, right? So you just have to be careful with that. But they're really great tools to have in your tool belt. They're a lot of fun. Again, they're low commitment. Um, and you can, like, I love the rose gold. It's really pretty. Um, I love the caramel. Like, I think that's my favorite. Uh, we're going to see where she lightens too. Um, somewhere between caramel and, and gold. But um, they're a lot of fun. Okay? So... Um, if you find that one pager, and then anything Wella is on this app. So if you need um, more information on other products that we carry, everything is on this app as well. So we just leave them in for about 10 minutes. Uh, they can also go on wet or dry hair. So if you put them on dry hair, you're going to get a little bit more intensity in the pigment. Also, keep your client's porosity in mind, too. Lower porosity hair isn't going to grab as much as high porosity hair. So those ends, you know, might grab more than the healthier hair at the top. So keep porosity in mind too. And then again, however long they last is really dependent upon, again, your porosity, how much you shampoo. You can expect four to six shampoos for them to naturally just kind of fade out of the hair. Any questions about that? Any other questions in general? I think we're almost to where we want to be. Yeah. Huh? I'm sorry. 
here, right? That's all saturation, right? He did really good saturation. And again, I'm not trying to make her a bright blonde. So this is good enough for me. Um, what, the, what level of developer did you use? 30 volume with the free lights. Um, and that's a good point too. So typically if I'm using our regular blonde or a blonder plex, I'm only using 6, 10, or 20, right? Uh, because that's like our, our worker bee lightener. The power's in the powder. I don't need 30 or 40 volume. Free lights is formulated a little differently. It only comes in 20, 30, and 40. Right, so that's why I use 30 on her because she's virgin. <laughs> hair guys, the hair guys love me. Okay, perfect. So why don't you go ahead and like take a quick little break. Um, I know it's hard for hairdressers to sit and listen. So go ahead and take a little break. I'm gonna rinse her out and then I'll come back and we'll do the toning and then styling. Sound good? Yes. Okay, perfect. All right. I did 30 free lights over. Mm -hmm. Okay. Temperature okay? Mm -hmm. See, since I didn't back comb her very hard, it just comes right out.
What kind of foils did you use? Um, those are from our Brazilian Illuminati. I just have a whole bunch of them. <laughs> gotcha. I don't think they're available anymore. Okay. But you can use any separators. Any separators? Mm -hmm. You can use foil, you can use plastic, you can use the clear dividers. Um, as long as it's not in their face, you don't need anything at all, really, because it's the clay based lightener. And that was a well off uh, clay based color. Mm -hmm. The well off free lights.
Another doctor? Since I didn't back comb her a whole lot, it comes out real easy. So let's say that the client had, like, she got her hair level five, right? Mm -hmm. And then you used the top. Approximately how much level would it lift? There's so many factors in that. Like, honestly, if somebody had a lot of previous color in their hair, I would probably balayage with our blonde or clips. I would just use our regular lightener and a foil. I would do more of a foilage to really break through that previous color. Since this is a surface color, it's not going to give you as much lift as you would like. So that's a situation where I would probably go in with regular blonde or clips. Another option, too, is um, have you ever used our magma lighteners? They're I'm colored sorry. lighteners. Basically, so you can mix those with the free lights developer and freehand paint with those as well. And so you can use like a eight nine plus, which is a blue violet, and paint with that on level five hair to counteract the warmth that you're going to get. That's another option as well. Um, when it comes to free lights, so this is a closed system. You can only use the free lights developer with the free lights powder. You can't use our other developers, but you can use this developer with our magma lighter. Okay, so I'm just going to go through and separate this out again. Pretty easy to see. <laughs> That's why I love this placement. It's easy to go back and retouch. Right, because the placement is so simple. And I didn't, I just shampooed her too. I didn't use any conditioner. I used a little bit of leave-in conditioner just to detangle, but the Color Fresh masks are masked, right? So you don't need to use a conditioner first. And this does not have to be an exact science. You don't have to go through and pick out every single blonde hair. But, you know, if you see it, I do it more from the end so you can really see the lighter pieces. But it's not really going to matter. So, again, like I said, today I'm using the Color Fresh Mask just to introduce you to them. But on the rest of this hair, like I said, you could do permanent if you're covering gray. You could do demi-permanent if you're just trying to gloss her and add some shine. Again, there's a lot of different things that you could do. So if you weren't using the mask, what would your tone be? I'd probably be using our Color Touch, our demi-permanent. Um, I'd probably go in with, like, I'm not trying to shift anything, right? So I'd probably gloss her with, like, like 571. I love the sevens. They're just nice rich brunettes mm -hmm. and then go in I don't know we're gonna go for more like caramely tones so I'd probably do like a level seven mm -hmm. some type of formula through here
to be using our chocolate for the rest of her hair, and I'm going to be using the caramel for the face framing areas. Okay. And then I'm just going to color melt the two through here. So I'm going to do the darker on the roots because again, I didn't want this to go all the way to the roots, and then I'll do the lighter pieces on the ends. her roots with the chocolate and I'm going to blend that into the caramel on the ends. And what's nice about toning with these, you know, if I were toning with color touch, you know, because it is like developing, I would do roots ends at the same time. Because if you go do the roots all over and then come back and do the ends, you're gonna have that little section where it's kind of spotty, where the dark is already processing. So I would immediately blend those two together. For these, it doesn't really matter because it's a mess, so you don't have to worry about that as much. It makes it a little bit easier. So I'm just going in on the roots. very careful around the hairline. There's nothing I hate more than seeing color all over somebody's forehead. They got places to go. 
go afterwards. Don't do that to them. <laughs> so you can see I like feather it in. Of course, if it's great coverage, you know, it's a little different, but you still should be very careful around that hairline. And I'm just gonna drag this down to where that color starts. You can see it's really spreadable, easy to apply. I like that you can see like exactly what the color looks like. <laughs> Now I'm just gonna clean that down. The same process I did to put the lightener in. I just like to go back and forth and back and forth. So again, I like these natural shades because they don't necessarily have to be pre-lightened. It's just gonna richen them up a bit, you know? And then if you wanna do more of the bold, fun shades, then you can do that on pre-lightened hair. because they're really good on the hair too. They're very conditioning, like it is a hair mask. So you get a little twofer for those clients that refuse to use masks at home, even though you tell them all the time it's important, <laughs> can trick them like, ooh, there's some color. And it's also foolproof, right? This is something you can feel comfortable sending your clients home with, because you can't really mess this up, right? You'd be surprised. Hmm? I know, right? <laughs> Do warn them, especially if they're using the brighter colors. Obviously, use gloves. Be careful with shower tiles and towels and things like that. But all they have to do is just squeeze this out of the bottle. That's it. So if you sent your client home with that product, mm -hmm. with her having the two colors, mm -hmm. would, you have to, would you explain it to her? Mm -hmm. Yep. Like I said, I talk to my clients just like I talk to y'all. I treat them like they're hairstylists. Like, hey, I'm gonna break this down for you. Like, and I'm very clear, this is how much to use. This is where to put it. This is how often I write it all down or I text it to them. So they're very clear. Even the regular products that I send them home with. It's like a prescription, right? Because otherwise, you know, you send them home with a product and you use a dime size, they're gonna be like, <laughs> right? So I sh when I'm doing their style, I'm showing them, this is how much product I'm using. I'm focusing this one on the ends. I'm focusing this one on the roots. Because I want them to be able to recreate what I did. I want them to walk around looking amazing. So people can stop them and ask them where they got their hair done, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't show your clients how to take care of their styles, when they get home and they be coming in looking all crazy, you're like, ooh, don't tell nobody I did that, okay? <laughs> you know? Those are your advertisements, those are your billboards. Um, one thing that I love to do, especially since I moved here and I'm like rebuilding again, is I give my clients um, incentives for tagging me in their selfies, right? Because I can post your pictures all day long, I'm gonna keep reaching the same people that follow me, but if my client posts a picture and tag me, well now I'm exposed to her 2,000 friends, right? So I say, hey, if you post a selfie and tag me, I'll give you $25 off your next service. Create an incentive, right? So that way I'm getting more exposure and you just want them to be proud you know of how good their hair looks hey Camila since we yes. have a little bit of a lull like a couple minutes yeah 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 do you mind if I interrupt for a second please do perfect hi everybody uh, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Jeremiah Sammons. I'm the Director of Education for Solana Spa Wholesaler. How many people here, this is your first time coming? Oh, wow, about half of you. How many of you come here all the time and so, like, we're almost like best friends? Uh, see, about another half. I mean, I, I like to have friends. Uh, you know, there's something about friends helping friends. So now I'm going to ask you guys to do something. Uh, how many of you guys have cell phones? <laughs> Great. 
How many of you have cell phones that have Google Maps or have uh, uh, Apple Maps on it? Okay. So if everybody would take out their cell phone while they have a minute and either go on Google Maps or Apple Maps, one or the other or both, and write a review for Salon and Spa Wholesaler, we would really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, for those of you that you know are about to start as stylists out in the real world, just, you just go to Maps and type Salon Wholesaler. We'll pop right up. Uh, for those of you that are about to, to be in the world of styling and be in a salon, you're going to find out that reviews are very important. Mm -hmm. um, they can make or break a stylist. They can make or break a salon. So uh, for those of you that are new and you don't know, we had a fire last year. And so we started all over again. We a brand new location, brand new classroom, brand new, very beautiful educators <laughs> who bring even prettier models. <laughs> So if you would go on your Apple Maps or your Google Maps, Google Salon Wholesaler, write a review on the store, write a review on the class. We offer free classes every Monday. Um, so every Monday we have a different class. Some are in English, some are in Spanish. We have facial classes. Today we have the balayage class with Wella, but there's a body wrapping class at one o'clock that I'll be teaching uh, how to do body wraps. So we try to keep it interesting Please like us, uh, write a review. If you enjoyed the class, you know, say you love Aquila or you love Jeremiah. If you didn't like the class, just blame Ricardo. Because <laughs> it's his fault, I'm sure. Uh, for those of you that don't know it, um, we carry a lot of different brands out there. Hair colors, keratins, foils. If you have any questions, we always have somebody in store who's a licensed professional that can answer your questions. So please leave a review. If you have any questions, come grab me. I like to be grabbed. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you. Yeah, I love what they're doing here. You're going to learn. Education is expensive, right? Um, it's like if, to take this class at the Wella Studio is going to be like $750, plus travel and all that kind of stuff. So you guys are getting a real gem here by them offering so much free education. Also, if you haven't done so, my Instagram is up there too. Please follow me. Um, if you try any of these techniques, please tag me because I would love to see your work. I love, I'm so inspired by everyone else's work as well. Um, and then also, if you have any other questions, if you're just too shy to ask or something pops in your mind later, I'm super responsive to my DMs, so feel free to ask any kind of questions you like. So I have this one last section left. So I've been color melting the caramel with the chocolate. So I just go through with my wide tooth comb, and then I slightly overlap, okay, from where I left off at. Again, fully saturating these ends, really working it in there, and then I'm using my fingers to kind of blend the two colors together, so we get a really nice seamless blend. Again, just being really conscious of your client too. You see how I'm doing everything away from her face. You don't want color on her face. You want this to be a very relaxing, enjoyable experience, right? It's all about customer service. I'm big on customer service in the salon. I think it's something that has kind of fallen to the wayside. And I think it's really important to really treat and cherish your clients, right? They can go anywhere. So I spoil my clients. I'm like, you need wine, do you need, I'll do a hand massage while you're processing, like, do you want a girl chat and gossip, like, I'm there for you. Because <laughs> it's so much easier when you drop that price tag at the end when they really like you, right? <laughs> Alright, so now I'm going back to the chocolate, and we're just going to do the rest of her hair. Again, you can do these masks on uh, towel dried hair or dry hair. If you do it on dry hair, you're gonna get a little bit more um, intensity, maybe a little bit more longevity depending on the uh, porosity. But again, these are quick and easy. So again, you're just saving a lot of time behind the chair. You saw how fast that whole lightening process took. Like I said, in the time that their roots are processing, you could have added all of these highlights. 
this balayage. And just making sure you're staying nice and neat and clean while you're working. You may not think it's important, but clients are watching you all the time, right? So, and you can see it in salons too. You have those stylists that are really put together and nice and clean. You have some that are just like all over the place, right? Especially when you're doing your application, clients notice the difference. So making sure you're keeping things really neat and clean and organized and not just having their hair all over the place. Just to let you know, again, I came back to bother you guys that like bothering you. Um, hair school, I know one of the things everybody needs, good purple shampoo. Yes. I have some excellent purple shampoos. If you've written a review and you show it to the front desk on your way out, there may be a bottle of purple hey. shampoo up there waiting for you. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, a little bribery, never heard anybody. Never heard. Any other questions? I know we've gone through a lot of information today. Any other than, and it could be about anything. I know I've got a lot of newbies here, so any color questions in general since I'm here? Yeah. Um, I came in a little late. Okay. Can I ask why you chose that technique? Um, so this technique we're doing today is like express face framing balayage. So this is a great kind of like little tool to have in your back pocket. If you have those clients that maybe came in for a different service and they're like, hey, I just want to think about kind of adding a little bit of color to it or adding some highlights, it's a very quick and easy way to get a big impact with not a lot of time. So all I did is I went through and zigzagged around our hairline. I backcombed and balayaged each section. So you can do that in addition to um, a root touch-up or a gloss. Uh, but it's just a quick and easy, like this is more of an express um, look. Now again, you can do this as a full balayage, right? You can do the whole head. But today it's just kind of giving you some time-saving tips because I think one of the main reasons that, um, ma'am, you asked earlier is like how to do this quicker, right? I think that's one of the big deterrents of balayage is people think it takes so long, right? It doesn't have to. Doesn't have to. Let's be honest, this is all the clients are paying attention to anyway. Yes. Yes. How many of them are going to look at the back of their head, right? <laughs> That's all they really want to see is the color around their face. So this is just a great way, uh, another technique and tool belt to have for your clients. Yes. So if you were going to do my whole thing, you would still use the same technique? I would. I do like to do bolder around the hairline. And then back here, I would probably do more diagonal back sections. Because um, I want to create more depth, right? She already has the depth because we're not lightning through here. But I would go through and do diagonal back and then paint the V's this way, right? So I'm leaving a lot of depth in the middle. Because you still want it to look natural, right? That's the only difference that I would do. But it, again, it depends on how bold or subtle your client wants to. You can do this same technique and do a weave and leave some of their natural hair out in between if you want it to be more subtle, if you don't want that like solid look underneath. So this is a very, very versatile technique that can be used a lot of different ways. I thought I saw another hand over there. Did I see another hand over there? Okay. Again, I'm taking pretty big sections. This uh, product is very spreadable. A little goes a long way. And again, we're just kind of glossing. Is that me? <laughs> I hate hearing my voice back. Like in my head, I don't sound like that, but I know I do. I hate doing video. Almost there. And she has a lot of hair too. And you see, this is still yes. like going pretty quickly. And then as a bonus, you're going to see how I smooth out curly hair, too. So, <laughs> you get a little deeper. And then it's only processed for like 10 minutes. So, probably just going to leave this top part on for a few minutes. This is almost done already. Yeah, again, time is money, right? 
But I think the trend too is, you know, no one really wants to spend four or five hours getting a color done every six weeks, right? So finding ways um, to make this process faster. I know a while ago I did a Facebook Live for here where I did foiling, right? And I, you can see side by side, got a huge impact with like 30 foils. That's it. I'm not one to sit there and put 150 foils in people's heads. I don't want to do it. They don't want to sit there that long. And you can still get a big impact without, it's all about how you place it, right? direct dyes they're just sitting on the outside of the cuticle there's no oxidation mm -hmm. so it's not going inside yeah. so again that's why I like them is because they fade out and you can switch it up again you know mm -hmm. they're not stuck to this and then I think this is a great technique for her too since she's never colored her hair before um, it's gonna be low maintenance and it's it's something but it's not like oh my god you know what I mean and um, as these fade out she can have fun with whatever color she wants to put on top of it or go lighter so that's the thing you're in trouble, Jasmine. Once you go lighter, you're like, can we do a little bit more? Can we do a little bit more next time? That's what ends up happening. You get blonde or exit. You guys, you know you have those clients. They're never blonde enough. They pay the bills, too. <laughs> All right. Last couple of sections. And again, think of these more so like a gloss toner, right? They're not gonna have the same longevity as toners, but they're great. Like I said, they're great for take home to like maintain. I love this chocolate from my brunettes. Like it just richens it up so much. I think brunettes kind of feel left out sometimes. <laughs> that was what to do, right? So this works great for them as well. Again, you guys can't probably smell anything, but it is fragrant free. It's just very, very subtle, soft smell. It's not anything intense, yeah. right? Soft, yeah. yeah, you can like barely smell anything. Yeah, like so there's lots of great oils in it, so it's just really conditioning for the hair. This smell, this not bad. Yeah, not bad at all. Yes. I have a question. Yes. What's the name of the mask that you're These are color fresh masks. Mm -hmm. Wella Color Fresh Mask. They just came out in October. So these are. Do you add the toner to it, or is it by itself? Nope, it's by itself. So it's se it's a semi permanent. So it's like a direct dye in a conditioner. Okay, so it's going to be more temporary. It's going to just naturally kind of softly fade out of the hair, true to tone. Um, but I just like it because you can use it a lot of different ways and have fun with it. So if you have those clients that like. You know you have them, they're like, um, I think I want to dye my hair red. Okay, now I want to go back to blonde. And maybe we can add some rose gold, like those clients. <laughs> These are great for, because it's just going to like fade out of the hair. Yeah. These are the ones that you just mentioned that they came from Yeah, so they were released in Europe. Yeah, so they were released in Europe last year. So we've been waiting for these for a long time, so they're really great. Okay, so while she's processing, let's do a little activity. So I want, if you're comfortable, I want you to share with me um, an aha moment you've had so far during this class. 
Nobody answers, I'm gonna feel like I did a really bad job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any aha uh -huh moments so far? I use this all the time. 
I haven't had any issues yet. But yeah, I mean, yeah, that's actually worth the money. Yeah. No, you're good, you're good, you're good. Which location are you from? Say that again? Which location are you from? <laughs> <laughs> Important part is the blow dry. 
right? Yes. You want to put the majority of your work into the blow dry, and the flat ironing should be for polishing. I typically do one pass with my flat iron. Um, with GHD, they're all preset to 365 degrees. Hotter is not better, it's all about technique, right? Especially when you have freshly colored hair, right? So first I'm using um, our Nutrien Rich Balm. This is just a great leave-in conditioner. Um, I like, the first thing I like to put in the hair is leave-in conditioner, because I'm solidifying that moisture in the hair. And then I'm going to be using our uh, Ivy Pearl Styler to smooth her out. And for that, I'm gonna put it in one section at a time. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, you haven't seen your hair at all, huh? No. <laughs> I have no idea what's happening right now. <laughs> so I'm just gonna blow her out in quadrants. I like to work in quadrants and then go from the bottom to the top. Let me get her part straight. Crunchiest, right? So you want to make sure it's super saturated with product. And then you don't need to pre-dry curly hair, right? We're just gonna go right in. About medium-sized sections. And I like to start out with my standard powder brush. I do a few passes where I'm just Pushing out some moisture, right? Stretching those curls out. Then I go in, truck and trailer, nice and slow. Take your time in the blow dry.
No, it's back there.
back pretty quick. these those like under the hood shots right how many times you got the people and like it's good on top but once you like part it and go inside it's like a hot uh -huh. mess right so it's important to be consistent with that blend so if they do wear their hair half up or half down it still looks good and blended right so just being consistent all the way through and not kind of cheating on the back you know <laughs> i see it all the time like i'll blow dry other people's hair and stuff i'm like oh girl mm -hmm. this is cute i don't know what's going on back here Either of those are good up to 450. Okay. Mm -hmm.
my GHG Platinum Plus Iron. Um, like I said, all GHG tools are preset to 365 degrees. Um, they heat up in 20 seconds. And this particular iron is like a smart styler. So it's going to automatically adjust to her hair type, the section size, how fast I'm styling, and all that good stuff. See how fast that looks? So what I'm just going to do is I'm basically going to like smooth her out and curl her at the same time. Because, you know, I'm all about my curly rolls. Unnecessary heat, right? So we're going to smooth and curl at the same time with the Platinum Plus. And I'm just going to do all of her curls away from her face because I want to see that pop of color. But again, even in styling, making sure that you're paying attention to face shape, right? I know everyone automatically curls everything back. But again, if you have a very round face, you're just going to create one big circle, right? So some face shapes, you might need to curl it towards the face. So keep that in mind. But she has a perfect oval face, so we can do it. <laughs> uh, first, I'm going to go in and get these roots. a little bit at the root area. I'm going to go in with my iron down. I'm going to rotate it a full 360 and then just glide it down. Nice and easy. And you can see I'm kind of doing like diagonal back sections. So I'm just going like with the natural curve of the head. How many of you do your curls with flat irons now? Mostly? Yeah, right? But you have to make sure that it's one that has this more rounded barrel instead of the flat square ones so you don't get those indents in the hair. Again, a slow one pass. like a whole head of highlights, right? And all we did was that face frame, which gives just enough pop to the hair. So now the tricky part is, when you work on the other side, you need to switch hands. So how many times you have one side that's like cooperating and the other side isn't, right? You need to learn how to do it with your non-dominant hand, whatever that is. So the barrel should still be facing in the same direction. In order to do that, it needs to be with your left hand. It takes a little practice, but you can do it. Eventually you should be able to blow dry and like curl and stuff with both hands. The 
Yeah, I see that all the time. You can tell me, like, oh, pretty. I'm just like, oh, what's this like? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I'm switching to my left hand so that it's still down and it's consistent, all right? And doing the same thing. And this is a cool tip, so you can hold on to this too. It's uncomfortable. Especially if you have somebody that wears the center part, right? <laughs> it really has to be on point. So practice that too. I say practice on a doll head first, you don't burn anybody, but practice working on the left side with your left hand. And if you want more of a wave, then you just do a half rotation instead of a full rotation. Who's gonna attempt this? You gonna try? You wanna try? It? <laughs> okay, okay. No, I remember um, when they first put the GH team together, we had to go to training. And um, it's based in the UK. So our trainer, Janine, came from Scotland. And she's small, but she, she's intimidating. Very intimidating little person. And they were just honest, no, 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 have to do it with your left hand. We're just like, <laughs> now look at me, it's like nothing. We're all freaking out, like, oh my God, what have we gotten ourselves into? I'm excited, I get to go to LA next week at the London for a really fun holiday event with them. Now this iron um, actually comes with a three-year warranty. So you can't burn through this one. <laughs> I think I've had it for two already. There we go. So Do the same thing in the back. Left hand, left side, right hand, right side. Again, I'm working in diagonal back sections too. So I want all of us to fall backwards. You guys ready for the holidays already? Didn't they go by so fast? Yeah. Like, oh my goodness. Thanksgiving's in like two weeks, <laughs> isn't that crazy? <laughs> Everybody follow me on Instagram? Yes. Thank you. I should be expecting like 50 new people on our page. 
Has anybody else come up with any ahas from the class today? Yeah. It's a good one. Love me I'm in River Rose. Do you hear people shadow you? Uh, I can. I'm taking some time off right now because I've been working so hard this year. But when I go back, yeah, I'm always down for that. 
I've literally been working like nonstop all year, so I'm just like, I'm taking a couple months off. I'm only teaching, I'm not behind the chair right now. Um, I was working at a salon, and um, I'm moving more into more full-time education, part-time here. So I'm talking to a few places right now about that. My back hurts. After years, <laughs> uh huh. And I have like a cool like group of clients that's like just enough, right? They don't ask me how much I charge. Like I just do their hair. It's great. But I do try, I travel a lot for my life. So I'm on the road a lot. Yeah, so I'll be more part time here, more education. I mean, I thought I was really good at it, but you guys don't have any ahas today, so I might have to reevaluate this decision. <laughs> you did again. Oh, trust me, I know. I know. I had a lot of fun this weekend, I understand. <laughs> Almost there, guys. Just a few more minutes. important especially when you do like a color service to really spend some time on the styling too because that's when you get those good pictures for your Instagram and referrals and things like that so I know it gets hard when you've been working for hours on a color and you just want to like get it done and blow dry but like spend some time on your styling because that's what's really going to help with your branding and stuff. I'm going to hit her a little bit with some cool air just to really set the curl.
some dark oil. Polish and fly away. Thank you so much for spending a few hours with me this morning. Good luck to all of you.